what's up cootie crew and welcome back to my channel today we are talking about ear care more specifically for stretched ears in case you're brand new to my channel i've been stretching my ears here on youtube for over two years at this point i think it's closer to three years i'm at 13 millimeters a half an inch size and while i have been mentioning my ear aftercare and stretching care and all of that in the individual videos, I didn't realize until someone suggested it that I don't have a standalone video for ear care. So thank you, Cootie Crew member, for that suggestion. Please remember before I begin that I'm not a professional. I just have had a good amount of time and experience with ear stretching and ear care. I know I say this in pretty much every video, but that's because I mean it. Every body is different and everyone's ears are different. Listen to your ears. The question I've gotten most often so far on all of my videos is questions about how often you should clean your ears. When I first started stretching, I cleaned my ears almost every single day because I had seen that somewhere that that's the best way to keep your ears from getting gross or stinky. As I continued to stretch, I realized it was just way too often to be doing that every single day. And it was actually irritating my ears to take my jewelry out that often, especially during healing periods. So currently I do it about twice a week. So every three ish days, I will take my jewelry out and clean it and take a shower with my jewelry out and really, really wash my ears. If I wait too long, then I get a lot of buildup on my jewelry or maybe my ears will itch or when I clean my ears, there's a lot of like gunk, gunk coming out of it. There have only been two times where my ears smelled because I waited too long. And both of those times I was on vacation and it was about a week between cleanings. So definitely that was too long. I knew it was too long. I was just kind of pushing my luck. So all of those are signs that maybe you're waiting too long. And again, if you're doing it too often, your ears are going to get irritated. And especially when your ears are freshly stretched because your ears are still healing and taking your jewelry out um, during that first week or so and trying to put your jewelry back in is just really going to make your ears swell up and get irritated. Some people on the videos have commented that they don't even take their jewelry out for the first month or so, and that works for them. Uh, again, listen to your ears. For me, my skin is really dry, and if I don't take my jewelry out and moisturize the inside of my ears, um, after the first week, my ears will just get crazy dry. So that's why it works for me. I wait, again, four or five days after I stretch to take them out for the first time. Usually I wait until the jewelry feels a little bit loose. So when I initially stretch, the jewelry feels pretty tight, right? Because it's a new size. And after a couple days, four, five days-ish, it starts to feel a little bit loose. And then I feel more comfortable taking it out, cleaning everything, moisturizing, and then putting it back in. So the follow-up to that is how do I clean my ears and my jewelry? For the jewelry, you're always going to have a little bit of buildup on it and that's normal. It's just when it starts to be a lot of buildup that you know you should be cleaning it more often. So what I do is I take my jewelry and I first use either a paper towel or a toilet paper or something like that to wipe off the extra residue from around the outside of the jewelry and then really go in with either a q-tip or again another piece of paper towel around the edges of it for a single flare or double flare um, plugs and tunnels just to really get in those creases get all of the gunk out while we're on this topic I do also clean my jewelry with a bit more of a deeper clean every once in a while as well um, just be sure to check on the best way to clean the material of the jewelry that you're using and I do consider this ear care because gross jewelry will really be bad for your ears on a cleaning day, I will also shower with my jewelry out and make sure to really get the water in my ears and kind of massage them while there's water there. And usually I get like tiny little bits of skin and buildup that come out of my ears. It's gross. Don't use soap. Soap will actually dry out and irritate your ears. All you need to use to rinse them out is shower water or the sea salt soak water. That's it. 
cleaning smaller sized stretched ears in the shower I just kind of would massage them around like this and that will break up enough of that extra skin to come out now that my ears are at a larger size and I can actually fit my finger through them I'll do the same sort of massage and then put my fingers inside and just kind of move them around massage them out again just breaking up and getting some of that extra skin out if you have regular ear piercings and you don't wear them for a while you know and then you put an earring in after I don't know a month or two and it, this like clump of gunk comes out the other side it's the same stuff building up on the inside of your ear it's like dead skin and things like that you gotta stay on top of it keep your ears clean too much of that buildup is gonna really bother your ears and it's also really not sanitary another way to keep your ears cleaned which is the go-to way if they are freshly stretched is salt soaks and I cannot say enough amazing things about salt soaks salt soaks they are amazing at clearing out some of the gunk even if with your jewelry in so I've gotten questions about whether I do the sea salt soaks with my jewelry in or out 90% of the time I do it with my jewelry in because again that's usually during the healing period so I'm trying not to touch my jewelry too much and I'm just soaking my ear but just the warm water will kind of get some of that dead skin out of the way and really flush out your ears and keep them all nice and clean for sea salt soaks warm water is best hot water will burn your ears and that's again gonna irritate them which you do not need you can find a bunch of recipes online for different size portions of the sea salt soaks just make sure you're using distilled water non iodized sea salt that's the key. If you use the wrong kind of salt, it's not really going to do much in terms of healing your ears. When I first stretch, I do the sea salt soaks once, max twice a day, and I'll soak them for five to seven minutes on each side. It is a time commitment, but if you're healing your ears, it is totally worth it. What the sea salt soaks do on top of cleaning is just help heal your ears. Um, next question is all about moisturizing again this is something that I changed after I had been stretching for a while so initially I was using coconut oil to moisturize my ears and I thought that was working well until I started using stretching balm and then I realized that coconut oil really wasn't helping me all that much while it did serve as a lubricant for stretching I needed to reapply coconut oil every day every other day to keep my ears moisturized um, which I think just really means that my ears weren't really retaining moisture from the coconut oil. I switched to using stretching balm somewhere around zero gauge size. I don't remember exactly now. And I am never going back. <laughs> I would 100% recommend using some sort of moisturizer or balm that is made specifically for stretched ears instead of using other oils that maybe are not I know pure jojoba oil is one of the best oils to use so in that case a pure oil is great this is the safest best option again jojoba oil or a stretching balm after switching I only have to moisturize my ears every three ish days like I said before so I know my ears are retaining moisture better they're softer they look happier all around highly recommend it um, plus again these are formulated Plus, since these are made specifically for stretching your ears or stretched ears, they have a lot of other ingredients that are really awesome for your skin around your ears. For example, the balm that I'm using has sweet almond oil, jojoba oil, wheat germ oil, tea tree oil, and myrrh oil. On top of moisturizing my ears every couple days, anytime I change my jewelry, I do add a little bit of the balm to my ears before I put in the new jewelry so let's take a look at how my ears are looking today so it has been a couple days since I moisturized them last and then when you are taking care of your ears make sure to first wash your hands so that you're not getting any bacteria in your balm or your earlobes just mush up a little bit and then rub it on to my ears and then a little bit on all around my jewelry and pop it in since I don't change my jewelry every day, this really works out to be about the same amount of days between <laughs> cleaning day and everything. Um, but that way my ears just stay nice and moisturized when I'm messing with them basically. Now how often you have to moisturize your ears may vary based on the climate you live in or the type of skin you have 
or whatever you're using to moisturize your ears. If they're getting red or dry or you take your earrings out and it's a little tough, then they need a little bit more moisture. I have pretty dry skin naturally and this is the routine that works for me. Again, remember to adjust based off your own needs. I don't think it's possible to moisturize them too much, but if you are removing your jewelry a ton and bothering your ears that way because you're taking jewelry in and out so much, then that's not really good either. When your ears are freshly stretched, you don't want to mess with them at all. Touch your jewelry as little as possible. I honestly don't touch my jewelry much at all, even when it's not in the healing process, just having it in. I only change the jewelry that I'm wearing every few days, and between that, I don't really touch it very much. And my ears are much happier the less I mess with them. Another oil that I put on my ears every once in a while, maybe every couple of weeks, is this vitamin E oil. I started doing vitamin E oil massages back when I was giving my ear some TLC and it just transformed my ears so much. So I just like adding it to my routine every once in a while. Again, it's probably every two or three weeks and I just massage it into my ears for a little bit and it's just good for your skin in general. One other question I got was about piercing bumps and what to do about piercing bumps. Um, I do have quite a bit of experience with the bumps, whether it be from my ears, my nose, or my sternum piercing, the bump has shown up. The first things to do when you get a piercing bump are pretty much similar to what I've already gone over, which is don't touch your jewelry, do these sea salt soaks, and if that's still really not getting rid of it, what I found that works really well for me is emu oil. So I used it on, I think, one of my rook piercings a long time ago, and then again on my sternum piercing when I was having that real big issue with the bump not going away and getting worse, and it cleared it right up. So that is also something that I would recommend. I know a lot of people will use tea tree oil for the piercing bumps, and I did try that on my nose for a while. I tried all the different types of diluted versions of it, different brands of oil, and it just always bothered my skin. So I personally do not use tea tree oil. I use emu oil and salt soaks and that's it. And that's it for my ear care tips. Again, this is what I have learned and what works for me. And if you want to share your own experiences and tips and things like that, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you're not already following my YouTube Instagram account, I will leave that information down in the description box so that you can stay up to date on what's going on with my channel and be part of some of the more interactive things like asking questions and things like that. If there are ear care questions that I haven't covered, again, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. If this video was useful, as always, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out all the other videos that I have on my channel. And if you want to stay tuned for future videos, please subscribe. Cootie Crew, you guys are freaking fantastic. And I'll see you next week.